previously on Savannah. Well, you have to admit, we make a damn fine team. You said you were getting rid of that hooker. Ex-hooker. <laughs> we can't see each other anymore. Not public. Get out! Ow! Peyton, will you marry me? You don't have to ask me twice. Brian has gone on so much about you, Peyton. It is a pleasure to finally meet you. Well, thank you, Mr. Alexander. <sighs> Brian, I can explain this. Well, I can't imagine how. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Brian! <laughs> you son of a bitch! Of course I did. You have nothing to offer my son except sex. Now run along and find somebody else to play with. Now look at the ball. Uh -huh. And follow through. Oh! We have got to find Nick Corelli. No, we don't. I had a little conference with him. Aren't these beautiful? And where exactly did you have this little conference? In my office. I just love the hybrid tees, don't you? So you and he were alone and quit changing the subject. Oh, the subject is flowers, and you're the one who wants to stick to it. Oh, my Ooh. word, you're not. What? You're not sleeping with him? She's she sleeping with Nick? I am not even going to dignify that with a response. Oh. Oh, uh -huh. you are red as a beet. You always turn red when you fudge. Mm -hmm. I'm not fudging. Oh, fess up. He kissed me. Are you satisfied? Is that all? Is that all? For Reese, I don't kiss casually. Burton, that is major. Hey, ooh, did you kiss him back? Only to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can't be impolite to Nick Corelli, you better join a convent. I trust him about as far as I can throw him. Not even that far. <laughs> Mrs. Alexander, hello. Hello. Oh, well, those are gorgeous. Are those painted ladies? No, satin sorceress. Oh, well, I think you picked the prettiest flower here. Thank you. Mm. I cannot believe you were civil to Eleanor Alexander. Oh, more than civil. She was downright nice. Well, now, why shouldn't I be? Well, what her son did to you. Oh, now I can't hold the mother responsible for her son's actions. Now, can I? So sorry that we missed our start time, Mr. Alexander. Don't worry about it. And please, call me Charles. Okay, Charles. Have you got uh, time for another cup of coffee? Yeah, I cleared my whole schedule for the golf game that never happened. Well, <laughs> it's relaxing. And I only play golf to relax. It's six and one to me. Well, if you want to play golf for relaxation, what do you do to keep in such great shape? <laughs> Thank you. Um, tennis is my new game. Tennis? Hmm. Good another round. Oh, absolutely, sir. You had a coffee and your wife had a double latte. Yes. No, not latte? Um, this is not my wife. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's no problem. And yes, it was a double latte. Right away. Sorry. He apologizes one more time. Oh, he's only embarrassed because when he found out I wasn't your wife, he presumed I was your mistress. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> But what a shame two people can't have a cup of coffee in public without everybody drawing conclusions. Well, I'm sorry it happened. 
Well, it's not your fault. And in any case, I don't embarrass easily. But I do take that waiter's reaction as a fair warning that I had better find myself a new golf teacher. What? Because you're very well known in Savannah, and a man in your position can't be too careful. <laughs> well, I say to hell with what the rest of the world thinks. My conscience is clear. Your conscience is clear. <laughs> what a bloater woman's pride. <laughs> I mean it. I insist on my right to socialize with whom I please. You do. I do. All right, then I can't be responsible for what happens. To my reputation. Yes. What do you think I meant? Hi. May I help you? May I help you? Can I just stop by? Say hello? Listen, Nick. I don't want you to think what happened yesterday in this office is an everyday occurrence with me. I don't think that. I mean, because you might say it was just kissing, but I take kissing very seriously. Oh, well, believe me, so do I. I don't want you to think that I kiss every man who walks in this office. <laughs> I should hope not. Of course, I'm awfully glad you kissed me back. I would have felt like a fool if you hadn't responded. Well, there's always a risk of making a fool of yourself when you meet someone new. And naturally, it's a lot less if you get to know that person well. Which is why there's wisdom in that old saw about getting to know someone before you do something impulsive. Right, right. Get to know somebody intimately before you get intimate. Nothing good ever comes out of doing something impulsive. And I mean that. I don't think we ought to meet in this office anymore. With only four days left until the election, Edward Burton trails incumbent Senator Michael Dawson by six percentage points. Mm. And this will make it eight percentage points. What is it? This is a contribution from a political action committee called Our Nation's Endeavor. I never heard of it. I uh, formed it myself. Uh, I call it One Pack for short. Catchy, don't you think? Our Nation's Endeavor Political Action Committee, One Pack. I like it. But you don't want your name associated with anything. Well, Georgia only requires two things to start a political action committee. One is a statement of purpose. The other is the name of the treasurer. The treasurer for One Pack is Lawrence Hadley who's been dead for two years, and by the time anyone figures it out, uh, the election will be over. And I'll bet your pack has a statement of purpose that will upset mainstream voters. Wait until after the check is deposited in Burton's campaign account before you leak this to his opponent. Television, please. Yeah. Daddy, you're never gonna be able to believe it's on TV. <laughs> Hang on there, Jeff. What terrible things they're saying about me now. That Edward Burton sees fit to accept money from an extremist organization like One Pack. Does one he pack. really believe? Well, what the, the hell is One Pack? I'll find out. Find out One Pack. Fancy name like our nation's endeavor, or is he gonna pretend he doesn't know what? Kind yes, of I need the office of the Secretary are. of State. These atheistic radicals threaten the very moral fabric of our society. Grace, what the hell's going on here? What does that bastard do with my contributor's statement of purpose? I don't even know who in the hell the contributor is. Well, uh, I'm looking into it, sir. Maybe Veronica Kozlowski. I, I broke it off with Veronica. Now, this had to come straight from someone on my campaign staff. How do you know? Well, yes, I need some information. Because whoever leaked it had to know the check was deposited. Now, you fire everyone who handles the mail. And you fire our treasurer, too. Well, you can't fire them, sir. They're all volunteers. And your honorary treasurer is Senator Harling. If the press finds out they... Which they surely will. They've got wind of everything else, including the size of my damn boxer shorts. Daddy, is there anything I can do to help? Don't you worry your pretty little head about me, dear. I'll survive. Grace, call a damn press conference. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, I'm holding. 
I cannot be responsible for the people who claim they support me. And just because they support me does not mean that I support them or anything that they stand for. So I have instructed my staff to return the unsolicited contributions sent to me by that reprehensible group known as our nation's endeavor, whose goals and values I find repugnant. This is one pack. And categories Compliments of Senator Dawson's staff. Uh, this committee is established to lobby for property taxes on church-owned real estate, taxes on so-called nonprofit enterprises. Do you think this group is legit? I wrote an article on a political action committee that lobbied for extraterrestrials, so I don't put anything past anybody. I suppose this late in the campaign, it doesn't matter whether it's legitimate or not. Burn will drop another couple of points. Can I quote you on that? Terry! What? what are you doing here? I'm on assignment. Oh, I don't believe it. Guys, um, this is Terrence Goodson, an old friend from the Big Apple. The Terrence Goodson with a byline? The same. Welcome to Savannah. Watch out for the mosquitoes, the women, and transplanted Yankees. <laughs> Appreciate that advice. What are you doing here? I told you I'm on assignment. Doing a feature on Edward Burton's campaign to unseat. Who is it? Michael Dawson. Dawson. That's not news in New York. Well, my editors picked this election and a couple others. They're uh, calling it the New South. Is it the same old story? So can you fill me in on Burton? Oh, yeah, we'll start with this. Over lunch? Oh, sorry, I'm uh, having lunch with my fiance. Fiance? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. After lunch? Well, I'll get Fred to fill you in. Fred, um, can you brief Terry on Dawson Burton? Excuse me, Terry, I've got a deadline. We will catch up later. Okay. Detective Collins here. Hey. Hey, honey, what's up? Take me to lunch at the Crab Shack. Today? Yes. Busy. Dean Collins, how often do I ask you to take me to lunch? Sweetheart, would you like to go to lunch today? <sighs> well, thanks for asking, honey. I'd love to. You better take a look at this. Uh, hmm? Come on. Edward Burton. You godless man. Get ready to meet your maker. Savannah will return after these messages. It is his will that atheists burn in hell, messenger of God. Is this the only lid have you gotten? Yes, but I have had a few crank calls ever since that one pack business. But I'm not going to be intimidated by some crackpot. I'm more worried about my polls than I'm about some silly threat. Well, sir, I take this threat seriously. looking for a new club. I was wondering if I could have a one-day pass to try out yours. Well, we have a new member special, two years for the price of one. Uh, well, I don't want to leap into anything without trying it out first, so could I just get a one-day pass? Well, what are some of your personal interests? Uh, aerobics, weights, swimming, tennis, what? Privacy. Oh, man. 
man. Looks like you lost your concentration at the Yeah. Good game. All right, nice game. Go ahead. threats are bogus. Most doesn't reassure me. My father's no angel, but he's had more bad luck in this campaign than anyone deserves. First his opponent takes his speech, then that whole one-pack business hits the news. His campaign staff leaks like a sieve. Well, maybe the death threats and leaks are connected. You have any idea who the mole is? No. Well, has anybody checked the phone or fax records at his headquarters? So many people have access to his office, it's impossible to find out who called him when. Well, if you don't know who's making the calls, find out who's receiving them. So you've been getting phone calls that shouldn't be. You can get a printout from the fax machine of every number where documents have been sent. Sooner or later, you'll find somebody who shouldn't be in the loop. Thanks. I'm impressed. Well, that's routine security training. But if you're impressed, I can show you a few other things I learned in the Navy, like how to make your bed so you can bounce a quarter off it. I may die of eating too much seafood, but I would die happy. Oh, by the way, um, an old friend of mine is in town from Manhattan. He used to work on my paper, and now he's a big-time magazine writer. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from him. What's he doing down here? Oh, um, he's uh, doing a story on Edward Burton's campaign. <laughs> Must be harder for news in New York. <laughs> Every time I turn around, there you are. Um, Dean, this is the, the writer I mentioned, Terry Goodson. Terry, Dean Collins, my fiance. Lane was just singing your praises, Terry. I'm pleased to meet you. Pleasure's mine, Dean. You looking for a table? No, we were just... Yeah, but I don't want it. Why don't you join us? Oh, I don't think so. Are you sure? Lane has told me all about you, and we harbor no prejudice against New Yorkers around here. Well, I do appreciate that. Hey, congratulations on your engagement. Thank you. I hope it goes better than ours did. What do you do for a living, Dean? I'm a detective. Uh, what goes better than whose did? <laughs> Our engagement. Detective, that sounds like interesting work. Oh, it really is. He's... Uh, it's no big deal, really. So, how long were you two engaged? About a year? About six months. <sighs> I'm sorry. You're right. Uh, we were just living together for a year. We were only actually engaged for six months. <laughs> You know, Terry, you really should try the crab. It's a local tradition around here. You'll love it. Damn. Sorry, I gotta get back to the station. No, no, don't get up. Y'all finish. I'll catch you later. I'll call you. Thanks a lot. For what? Spilling the beans about our engagement. He said you told him all about me. I told him about you, Terry, not about us. Well enough? You're early. How was your game? Fine. You lost, I can tell by your tone. I played exercise, not to win. <laughs> Brian and Nancy can't come to my birthday dinner because Nancy's playing bridge party. Fine. But it's not fun. It's rude. This will be the first birthday that Brian's ever missed. It's not the end of the world, Eleanor. Well, I didn't say it was. I said it was bad manners. You know, nobody's good enough for your son. You hated Peyton Richards, and now you're criticizing Nancy. Brian could have married Mother Teresa, and you would have found fault. Well, Mother Teresa is a little old for him. <laughs> you are the most critical woman I have ever known.
something funny did show up at my father's campaign headquarters. Funny ha-ha or funny suspicious? I'm not laughing. Somebody's been sending faxes here to the riverbank. Well, has your father faxed you? No. It was Tom's fax number. That means that Tom has a contact inside my father's campaign staff. Who? I don't know. But I was thinking, if we reverse the process, and we give Tom phony information that an insider can use, then maybe we can catch him. What do you think? I think it's my turn to be impressed. I'm not a security guard. It's not a security detail. The chief wants you at Burton's campaign appearances until the election, which is three days from now. Makes it a security detail. Man, what's eating you? Excuse me. Ole. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to give you my best. See, you are a very lucky guy. I'm the lucky one. You rushed off after lunch. Is everything OK? Oh, yeah, it's just peachy. Oh, uh, well, uh, I'll let you two lovebirds be alone, all right? <laughs> See you tomorrow. Dean, I wanted a chance to explain. What's to explain, Lane? You just didn't tell me you were engaged before. It's no big deal. Look, I wasn't hiding it. You weren't volunteering it, though, were you? It just it wasn't relevant to anything. If you say so. As a matter of fact, I was going to tell you about Terry just before he showed up at our table. But if he hadn't shown up Savannah, I would have never found out about him. Am I right? You mean you want a, a list of every man I've ever dated in my life? No, just the ones you were engaged to would be sufficient. You know what? You got married, Dean. You started a family. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Join a convent until you were available? Listen, I got a lot of work to catch up on. So do I. Yeah, I'm missing a crate of olives. Well, check your paperwork. No, I said 10, not nine. Here he comes. Ready? Start now. Oh, Peyton, you just gotta make up with Daddy. I know that as well as you do, but things are different now. He's sick. Oh, I mean seriously ill. He doesn't know that I know, and don't you dare breathe a word of it. Oh, Lord, help us if the reporters get their hands on this information. And you've got him hooked. Of course it's upsetting. He's so young. I'll tell you how I know. I saw him taking pills he was hiding. Yes, hiding. He keeps some medicine in his overcoat in the back office closet, of all places. Great, great. Now wrap it up. Peyton, you've just got to start being sweet to him. I don't know how long he has to live. Nice touch. All right. I'll talk to you soon. My uh, lawyer's in the same building. Uh, well, it is a small world. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. Um, where are you parked? I'll walk you to your car. Oh, thank you. But um, I'm actually waiting for a taxi. Well, it's about 20 minutes late. Well, you want me to drive you? My car's right over there. Oh, thank you. But I don't want to impose. <laughs> it's not an imposition. You sure it won't be any trouble? No, I wouldn't have offered it to work. Uh, where do you need to go? Well, is the riverboat out of your way? No, not a bit. <laughs> um, would you mind if we just drove through a burger joint? My meat went through lunch, and I'm starved. I think we can do better than burgers. How about some ribs? Mmm, wait, don't you have to be at work? Or... I, uh, missed breakfast and lunch today. Well, shame on you. <sighs>
supply the proof that the bastard has a heart condition and that he lied about it, the reporters will do the rest. No one wants to vote for a dying man. This will be tough. You have to do it, Grace. You know that his doctors will cover for him. Oh, I know, but I'm stealing the man's medication. He could die. Leave some pills in his jacket pocket if you're feeling generous. Okay. But I'll have to wait until everyone leaves the office. Just get the bottle. Savannah will return after these messages. Oh, what's the occasion? It's her birthday. Going to dinner to celebrate. What do you think I ought to get her? Any suggestions? Well, I like flowers. I have to get her something that costs an arm and a leg. Oh, I'm sure you don't mean that. <laughs> you met my wife? Yeah. Well, I think that your company should be gift enough for any woman. <laughs> I'll try that on her. Well, why don't you try something sentimental, like, um, a framed picture of the two of you. You are romantic. Well, if you were my husband, I would tell you that what I wanted, you can't buy at a store. When is your birthday? It's just around the corner. <laughs> now, we better go on and scoot so you can buy your wife that gift. It's Lane. Can I speak to Dean? Sure. He's right here. It's Lane. I already told her that you're here. Well, you didn't check with me first, did you? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Lane. Uh, he just stepped out. Okay, well, please tell him I called. I've been trying all day to reach him. Thanks. Everything okay? Oh, sure, yeah. Dean is just, you know, working late. Hey, I'm sorry about lunch. I hope I didn't cause a problem between you two. No, yeah, of course not. Well, that's a relief. Um, here, I just came by to drop these clippings off. You still use that thing? All the time. You gave this to me for our three-month anniversary. Mm -hmm. Well, I needed some excuse to get you organized. <laughs> you had an ulterior motive. You wanted me to quit standing you up for dinner. Well, that didn't work. Well, you live and learn. Dean seems like a nice guy. He is. Mm -hmm. So he's the one, huh? Mm -hmm. He's the one you're gonna sail down the Nile with and climb the Andes? <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Well, you still plan on traveling around the world, don't you? Well, Dean is kind of a homebody, so... Well, as long as you're happy. I am. I guess a lot of people have to give up their dreams. Thanks for the clippings. Shame on you, Grace. Needless to say, your employment is terminated. Effective immediately. How much did Dawson pay you? Or was this all Tom Massick's idea? You people only understand money. Well, I did what I did because this is an evil man. Oh, no. A zealot. He fired my father. 
I don't even know your father, Grace. Oh, well, why should you? He was just another peon, right? Just another cog in the Burton money-making machine. Spare us. And he was fired two weeks before he was due to retire. So he lost his pension. And so you have to blame me because your father didn't set aside a little nest egg. He died of pneumonia. Because he was afraid to go to a hospital and run up bills that he couldn't pay. Well, then he was a foolish man. You are beyond contempt. And you're on the wrong side of that door, dear. Good night, Gracie. Sorry I ever doubted you. I apologize. I accept your apology. Good night. I need you. Congratulations. Let me, let me put something on. It was Grace Boyer, Dad's PR director. We did it. We did it. Oh, I'm so grateful. <laughs> well, as much as I like being thanked, particularly in this manner, the sting was really your idea. You know, I think I finally did something to impress my father. Did he thank you? No, but that's just my dad's way. I wouldn't even know where to start if it hadn't been for you. Well, I've always been good at knowing where to start. Kiss every woman that comes in here. That's a relief. <laughs> Why don't you put some clothes on and we can go out and celebrate? Actually, I was hoping you'd say, let's stay in and celebrate. You wish. <laughs> Security. So the police take those death threats seriously. Off the record. Okay. I'm sorry I blew up at you. I'm sorry too. Your ex. He seems like a nice guy for an ex. You have nothing to be jealous of. Hey, hey. Dean, how you doing? Now why would I be jealous of a high-profile New York writer with a byline and an expense account? The election is over tomorrow and he'll be on the first plane. Well, you tell Mr. Goodson I'd be happy to arrange for a police escort, take him to the airport. Why? Is he in some kind of danger? No, I just want to make sure he gets out of town. Terry's here for one reason and one reason only. He's on assignment. He's here because you're here. Period. <laughs> Duty call.
Savannah will return after these messages. Some gun toting coward shuts me up. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm fine. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Everett Burton will not be intimidated by anyone. Not here, not now, and not in the state legislature. I promise you. I promise. Call it bravado, call it recklessness, call it what you will, but this reporter has never seen such a performance by a public figure. Apparently unafraid of being shot a second time, Senate candidate Edward Burton, who was wearing a bulletproof vest on the advice of police, angrily defied security and insisted on speaking his mind. Oh, are you all right? Yes, uh, just a couple bruised ribs is all. I'm fine. Oh, I'm so relieved. You get all the credit. I put on that bulletproof vest because you kept telling me about it. <laughs> oh, Daddy. Oh, honey. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Tender. Mm. Peyton Richards is here to see you, sir. Oh, uh, show her in. Uh, Angie, uh, it's, uh, it's getting late. Why don't you go ahead and take off? Thank you, sir. Good night. Night. I'll, uh, see you tomorrow. Am I disturbing you? No, 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 no. Please. You've reached the Alexanders. Please leave your message when you hear the tone. Uh, Eleanor, if you go by the house before we meet at the restaurant, would you please bring my reading glasses? Otherwise, I'll, um, see you at 8 o'clock at, um, Elizabeth's on 37. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, you're not interrupting a thing. That was the uh, answering machine. Well, I'm glad I caught you, because um, I brought a little something for you to put on your wife's gift. Peyton, Eleanor is not your favorite person. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted an excuse to see you. You don't need an excuse. This is a little embarrassing. You don't get embarrassed, remember? Uh, I used to think not, but there are damn few men who have the effect on me that you do. <laughs> oh, I'm making a fool of myself, aren't I? Got a story now. We've got a story. We might even get a cover out of this. Yeah, 
So here we go. Uh, no one was... Wait a second. Make that uh, no bystanders were injured. Lane, what are you doing? You told me you were assigned here, that you already had an article in the works. Th they gave me some flexibility. You fraud. Dean was right. The whole staff was right. The Georgia Senate race is not national news. What are you doing here? New York isn't the same without you, Lane. I'm engaged. I know. Listen, I, I didn't come back to cause any trouble. I came back because if there was any chance, even a long shot, that we could revive what we had, I'd be a fool not to try. Hey, look. Well, what it's worth, my advice well, is no wonder your advice I'll ask for it. I want your advice. You gotta trust the man. It's the only way. Trust her. So, you went, uh, farther in that speech than we had planned. <laughs> You mean the gun toting coward? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Stick a microphone in my face and I'm liable to talk for hours. <laughs> Not care much about what I say. Think the police will find out how we did it? Not in a million years. Mm -hmm. And after your impressive oratory, sorry. It's all right. I imagine you just moved ahead of Dawson in the polls. <sighs> Why well, we just have to wait till the votes are counted. Mm -hmm. Come here, you. <laughs> have a thing to do with that. All the dirty tricks, all the lies, all the leaks. You might not have pulled the trigger, but you sure as hell fueled the fire for whoever did. Your father is slopping over with enemies. Doesn't need my help to get shot. I'm not going to waste one more minute of my life arguing with you. My father says I never learned from experience. Well, I learned one thing, and that's not to stay in business with a snake. What, what are you talking about? I never want to lay eyes on Tom Massick again. I'm selling my third of the riverboat. You're not. Oh, just watch me. You're serious. I'm contacting my lawyer right now. Wait, wait, wait. Look, I, I understand why you hunt out, but this is an incredible opportunity for me. I want to buy you a share. Listen, Peyton, I can't afford to give it away, and I know that you don't have the money, so unless you've got some sugar daddy up your sleeve, I need to find a buyer right now. I am stuffed. Never have had that dessert. Oh, well, I think it's the finest dinner I have had in a month of Sundays, and I want to thank you for dinner and for my present and for being the most charming husband in all of Savannah. <laughs> oh, I wonder who called. scenes from the next episode of Savannah. Join us again next week for another exciting all-new episode of Savannah. And this Wednesday, while those kids from Beverly Hills take a break, why not visit the twins in Detroit? It's Tia and Tamara in an all-new episode of Sister, Sister, followed by Nick Frino, licensed teacher, the Wayans Brothers, and the Jamie Foxx Show. That's the Wednesday night comedies only on the WB. Girl involved. Dad, that's not what you think. I'm not attracted to this girl. I don't believe you. <sighs> Look, I'm not attracted to every woman I see. Yes, you are. An all-new 7th Heaven before Savannah next Monday. <laughs>